Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of New Tech Tuesday Tutorials. Today I'm going to be going over workspaces and how to manage your monitor sources so that you can keep your interface streamlined and a little more organized. So let's take a look. So here we are in our TC1 interface and by default this is going to load all of our inputs so it'll be inputs 1 through 16 in this particular unit and then also display our DDR bins, our graphics bins, and our mix effects rows as well. Now I only have inputs coming in on uh, inputs number 1 through 8 and nothing coming in on 9 through 16 so I want to kind of clean this up a little bit so that I don't have just empty space here and just show specific inputs and how we'll do that is by managing our workspaces and so if we click on workspaces in the top left corner of our screen there are four options to choose from here which we can uh, tailor to our needs but let's go through each of these individually here so the first one uh, by default is going to be set up to monitor our waveforms and vector scopes now this is where you can go to check for uh, white balancing color purity density things of that nature and the second one is the one that loads by default which is all of our inputs the third one is going to be an octet or just showing uh, eight inputs at a time and then the last one will only show four inputs at a time uh, preview and program just kind of remaining the same now these show DDR1, DDR2, Graphics 1 and 2 as well, but uh, they don't uh, have to stay exactly those sources. Let me show you how to change that here. But uh, I'm going to go back to our third choice here, which will show my eight input sources coming in. And some of these are coming in via SDI or NDI. Uh, now, input number one here, we're just going to call that box number one because it's not married to input number one on the back of the unit. Uh, so if I want, I can right click on this box and I can select anything from program to preview to different uh, mix outputs, uh, different inputs altogether, or media players. And I want to just have uh, my uh, mix effect row coming in here where it's just me on my fancy virtual set. So I'll select mix effect number one. And now I have that source uh, in, in box number one. Now input number two over here. Uh, has Kiki coming in on an NDI source so let's change that to something else so I'm gonna go ahead and right click on her and let's select graphics number one since I don't see it up here so now I can see what I uh, have available in my graphics tabs and now uh, let's go over here to input number three or box number three and let's change that to let's say input number eight so now that I have uh, box three and box eight here are echoing each other. Now something important to note here is uh, whenever you make a change, it will display underneath what that change has uh, turned into. So now this is mix effect number one in box one, graphics one in box two, and input eight in box three. And if I want to make any changes to the input itself, so let's say we'll go to input number eight and change the input setting of this, I'm going to select source uh, coming out of my NC1 I.O. Uh, input number seven. Now as you can see box number three and box number eight have changed accordingly because I have uh, set that to a different input source which is the same as number seven right here. So you can make changes to those sources from within here but let's go ahead and uh, put this back to normal so I will here, put number eight, and now that's changed back to where it needs to be. And box three, I'm going to select input three again, just so I can put things back to normal here. Now, if I want to switch back and forth between different workspaces, let's see, we'll go to uh, the four input source here. Uh, that just shows our DDR1 bins, and again, I can make changes to those and select my mix effect and now I can see me in my virtual sets. Uh, if I go back to the third option here, it saves what I had before so it won't overwrite. Now I could go through and change these individually back to where they were before but I just want to do it in one fell swoop. So I'll go into workspaces here and choose load defaults and select octet and now we're back to how it was originally by default here. Now changing these sources on 
our uh, inputs themselves can also be done on our mix effect sorry our program and preview rows as well so right here preview is set uh, to just mimic whatever I have uh, coming through on my preview row but let's say I have my uh, show set up just a little bit differently uh, and I want to have this showing what's going out of mix effect uh, sorry our, my output number two so we'll go into our hardware configuration and under output uh, mix number one here is going to be my program which I'm gonna leave that the same but mix number two I'm gonna set that to me2 and I can use that as a secondary switcher so if I open that up here I'm mix two I can select between different sources and we can use that just as a secondary switcher going out to say a, a projector or a monitor or just another source altogether and if I make any changes to my program row right now let's say I just take my DSK over that you'll see that preview is affected as well uh, because of how, what I have selected here on my DSKs but that doesn't show truly what I have going out of mix 2 the uh, output coming out of the TriCaster so I'll go ahead and right click on this window here and instead of selecting preview right now I'll go ahead and select mix 2 so now no matter what I do on my program row mix effect 2 uh, or output number 2 is not changed because I have it selected accordingly so as you can see workspaces is a great way to keep your shows a little more organized and streamlined now if you like these tutorials and you want to go a little bit further into what the TriCaster has to offer go to newtech.com slash demo to sign up for a time and I'll show you the ins and outs of our TriCaster systems in a little more detail. Until then, thank you for watching and be sure to tune in next time for another edition of New Tech Tuesday Tutorials.